Hey there guys, I'm Dunmere, I'm a top 100 Overwatch and now rank 3 Super Vive player, and here I have a guide for you guys for Jewel. I've played this game for over a year and a half already in pre-alpha testing, so I have 400 hours of experience, so I hope you guys learn something from this. Let's begin with Jewel's abilities. First, Jewel has a two-part passive ability. The first part causes her to apply stacks of static to enemies by damaging them, with four stacks of static making the enemy fully static charged. These stacks can then be exploded for massive damage by dashing through them with Jewel's movement ability. The second part of Jewel's passive causes enemies to drop lightning orbs when hit by some of her abilities. Jewel can then pass over the lightning orbs to get a free reset on her dash. Jewel's primary fire is a long range lightning bolt shot. This shot deals damage to the enemy it hits and applies one stack of static. For Jewel's secondary fire, she has a lightning spear knockback ability. Charge up a lightning spear over a short time and then release it to throw it out. The spear knockbacks and damages the first enemy it hits, stunning enemies if they are knocked into an obstacle or another enemy. Additionally, landing this ability will spawn a lightning orb and apply one stack of static. Jewel's E ability is a location targeted pull. Jewel calls down a delayed bolt of lightning that will damage, ground, and pull any enemies caught by it. This ability also applies two stack of static to any enemies it hits. In addition, you can hold the keybind after use to adjust the direction the pull will move enemies, and can be used to manipulate wisps. Jewel's movement ability is an exploding dash. Charge up your movement before dashing forward as an unstoppable bolt and exploding in a small radius at the end. Any enemies passed through by the dash or caught in his explosion will have one stack of static applied to them. Dash through fully static charged enemies to trigger her passive explosion damage. Get a dash cooldown reset and have mana restored. Jewel's ultimate launches her up into the air where she becomes immune to enemy abilities. She can then reactivate to land anywhere in a circle around her and cause an explosion. Any enemies that are hit by the explosion take damage, knockback, one stack of static, and also drop a lightning orb. With the abilities covered, let's discuss Jewel's strengths and weaknesses, starting with the strengths. Jewel is an incredibly powerful and versatile character with all the tools she needs to make a fight go how she wants it to. So to explain this a bit deeper, we have her first core strength of her excellent ranged kill potential. She has this strength because her primary fire, stunning spear, and dash all are not only effective at very high ranges, but they also pack a heavy punch. Her ranged spear knockback is quite high damage in addition to giving stun potential. Her primary fire doesn't actually provide the raw damage output itself, but indirectly applies the pressure due to how reliably it can be used to stack enemies up. So the closer an enemy gets to being full stacked, the more they absolutely cannot be within her dash range and her dash is simply massive in distance. This leads into her second core strength of her having the best 1v1 potential in the game. Jewel's capability to rapidly stack up enemies, even with just her primary fire, applies heavy, heavy pressure to them, meaning if they don't dramatically outplay her or finish her before she can get all four stacks, they lose. Yet she doesn't really have something that limits her capability to do this. This is because she has her knockback spear to keep enemies that want to aggro onto her off of her. In addition to her lightning strike pull to suck enemies that get too close in onto her, or just to suck them out of cover for an easy full stack, or even to pull them away if she needs a second knockback. And of course, her dash is nowhere near limited in range or cooldown if she needed to chase her kite. And she also has a panic button ultimate that she can chase her kite with too. On top of this all, she has numerous ways to reduce the cooldown or completely restore her dash during this. So since landing a dash explosion proc will finish off nearly any enemy you've damaged a bit, you basically just have to play very poorly to be punished by an enemy in a 1v1. Oh, and to just clarify, her movement is also absolutely insane. Even if she didn't have her resets from static explosions or the orbs she can easily obtain, she still has an ultimate that also spawns orbs on top of just being a movement ability itself that also allows her to cross over obstacles. So with these strengths as powerful as they are, does Jewel actually have weaknesses? Despite her oppressive capabilities, she still isn't perfect. Specifically, she lacks in raw team value output compared to what she could have. Since much of her damage is backweighted behind the static stacks, she doesn't provide as much value immediately. And though the pressure she applies once an enemy is stacked will definitely help her team, the stacks themselves do nothing for allies. So in a situation like if her team desperately needs to kill someone rapidly, she won't always be able to put as much of a direct damage output into it, if she can't get them full stacked. Sometimes she may also struggle to get her stacks on the target she actually wants to, such as if other enemies are in the way of her primary attacks. Other characters would still be chunking the enemies they accidentally hit for full damage in this situation, but Jewel won't be, which means she'll be outputting a lot less value in a situation like that. So with the strengths and weaknesses finished, let's talk about how to actually play Jewel. Jewel plays best aggressively on the flank, hunting for opportunities to stack up targets with either her primary or a good combo, and then dashing in and out of the enemy team to explode the target and then get back to safety. Because of the insane damage her dash will get from a full stacked enemy, she'll simply just win her fights if she doesn't force things and gets those stacks as they become available. So if she just stays alive and uses her utility to pressure enemies at range, hit them through walls, or to knock them away they engage in her, she will thrive. So with that as an overview of strategy, let's go into specifics on her abilities. Jewel's primary fire is pretty simple overall, and will get great value just tagging enemies to get them stacked up, but it does have some nuances. Specifically, it has some animation cancelling capabilities, meaning you can fit a primary fire in between abilities or after abilities without requiring downtime, which is very useful for getting extra stacks in. So play around this and look to use it in situations like right after a lightning spear. As for Jewel's lightning spear, there are some things you need to know too. 
It has a sort of charge up effect, but doesn't actually increase in power with the charge. So you can just tap it to get full damage out of it. Of course, the ability also can stun enemies that it knocks back into an obstacle, but players also count as obstacles too. So if enemies are grouped up, you can line up two of them and spear them together for a group stun. Or you can also stun an enemy into one of your own teammates as that will stun them too. Yet since Lightning Spear will always guarantee a Lightning Orb from it, you should always think about how you can use that to your advantage, such as using it on a close by enemy to get the dash you need to escape with when you didn't have it. Or you could use it for a combo like using Lightning Spear with an immediate primary fire after, then dash into it and then primary fire again for full stacks that you can then pop with your dash. Now to Lightning Strike, this ability offers great crowd control utility. Usually, it's best used to pull someone toward you, but since you can aim the pull direction to your cursor by holding the keybind longer before releasing it, you can use it to pull enemies away from you that are targeting you, or to toss them off into an abyss where they'll struggle from the grounded effect. This ability also can pull Wisps, which is great for denying them, but can also similarly be used to toss them off into the abyss to finish them. Yet the Lightning Strike also offers a powerful utility in terms of combos. If you can land a knockback stun on an enemy with Lightning Spear close by, you can pop the Lightning Strike on top of them with a primary to full stack the enemy. This combo is a bit of overkill, but will give you a free dash kill and will also allow you to crush high HP targets. Also, you can even pull Ally Wisps or your Lightning Orbs with this ability too. For Jewel's Dash, it's very important to think about the shape when using it. It has a sort of lollipop shape that expands at the end. While you get good value from dashing fully through enemies sometimes, you can increase your chance of blowing up a stacked enemy by charging your dash up just enough to land the end location circle on top of them. The explosion size also gives a solid bit of extra range than it would seem, so you can look to go from basically off an enemy screen to right on top of them. Or, you can maximize your hit chance by getting close to an enemy and then just tap the dash right through them before they can even react. In addition to this, Jewel's dash also offers immunity during use, so you can dash through an enemy's CC ability if you time it correctly. Last with Jewel's ultimate, it gives a great effect as an escape tool or a chase tool, but it also offers a knockback effect. So while this isn't the main reason you want to use it, you can use the ult right behind an enemy to knock them into your team, which can get you a bit of extra value if you plan to use it into the enemy aggressively anyway. Just keep in mind, any enemy you hit with the ultimate's explosion will drop a lightning orb you can use for a full dash reset. With the specifics covered, let's talk about how this all can be put together into a full playstyle for Jewel. On Jewel, you should always be looking to hard flank the enemy if possible, as Jewel wants to spend as much time poking enemies at her max primary fire and dash range as she can, which flanking, of course, allows. Yet she also has amazing movement that'll let her escape or get back to her team for healing if she starts losing an exchange, so she can go as far on the flank as she needs to get good sightlines. Once on them, she'll just want to default to poking enemies outside of their range, while looking for a good spear stun opportunity or lightning strike pull. Even if you don't get a good opportunity for one while doing this, you'll be stacking damage on enemies and they'll be forced to either push into you to try and finish things quickly, or just be forced to back up. This applies even to the higher range characters, as they are likely to get full stacked or crowd controlled by Jewel before they can beat her at range. However, you should keep in mind that you'll only want to use both of your CC abilities if you guarantee a kill combo, such as landing a primary fire into spear stun that is close enough for you to land a lightning bolt pull that you could dash onto afterwards, or knocking an enemy into a place lightning strike with your knockback spear. Otherwise, you want to keep one CC to use for peeling yourself, especially if the enemy you are fighting wants to get close on you to stun you or fight you. Even if you aren't getting a full combo or a powerful stun off, you will just win over time on duel, so you really just don't need to force anything. But instead, you should just worry about getting surprised and stunned. This is most likely to occur if you let yourself be coaxed into something like pushing an enemy hiding behind a corner or something like that. So pay very careful attention to your positioning in situations like this, such as against a character like Kingpin that will look to single or double dash slam you if you walk too close around a corner on him. However, this doesn't mean you can't contest an enemy like this though, just that you need to take precautions. Of course, this becomes much more risky if you don't have vision on the enemy, but if you do, then you have more leeway. Mostly, you just don't really want to hard push until the enemy is fully stacked or you CC'd them. Nor do you really need to push before this, as you have multiple options you can use. Like using Jewel's Lightning Bolt to pull enemies out from cover, or to just secure the final stacks on them. Or preemptively popping Lightning Spear as you jump around a corner, or just swinging out wide to give yourself time to reaction dash away through a stun. When an enemy is finally fully stacked though, you still won't always need to just coin flip a push into the corner. Instead, you can use your dash to end right around the corner, so you can hit an enemy if they're standing there with the ending explosion, and then easily have the option to kite back behind that corner if you missed. Alternatively, you can charge it up for a long dash and use it to slide across a corner to hit an enemy posted up on it, while also being safe far away after in case you've missed. Regardless, Jewel has many tools with which to win 1v1s, so you should always be looking to take them. Just don't rush things and allow yourself to be caught by a stun. So while this is how Jewel plays into solos, she will find herself fighting into groups also, or find herself forcing enemies to group up from her pressure. While she'll still want to poke at enemies with her primary attacks when they're grouped, it can often be more difficult to continuously attack the same target like this, so you should focus more on hitting crowd controls instead. Either spearing enemies for stuns or landing good lightning strikes and angling the pull toward your team. You have your team to support your gameplay most of the time when playing into groups, so you can get a bunch more value if you play around your teammates' gameplay. Watch for things like an ally engaging, something like a grenade being used that will push enemies towards a certain location, or just an enemy being distracted by a teammate to predict how the enemies will move. 
Then you can punish them with a good lightning strikes or lightning spears, or a combo of them. Usually lightning strikes will be best in general, but lightning spears can get great value if you line up your spear target up to hit an enemy also and stun them too. But like before, you'll still want to save one of your crowd control cooldowns during this, and not position absolutely crazy close to the enemy on the flank unless you can guarantee a really good combo. As again, you'll still only really lose if you get stunned and caught out. But when you stack up an enemy or land a good CC that'll let you stack them up, you can quickly dash through it to kill them and then dash back to safety. Just whenever you look to dash a full stack target like this, you need to be careful to predict if the target will die or dash away before your dash can hit them. Because if they die or you miss, you'll find yourself struggling to escape after, now that you're standing in the middle of the team without a dash. Just in general when using dash, you should also be thinking about how you'll dash once you secure a dash reset of any kind though. As though Jewel is extremely unlikely to die once she's dashed, taking too much damage or a CC ability because you had to think about where to go after is just trolling. Also, you may just miss out on an opportunity to chase down a low enemy or trigger another passive explosive if you aren't predicting this too. While you shouldn't force yourself to use them, they can be a powerful method to get a free reposition, to dodge an enemy's cooldown in a 1v1, or to bypass the above problem of the enemy dying before your dash hits or just missing your static explosion in general. Yet even though playing well to the above tips will give you great value on Jewel, this hasn't even included a specific discussion on her ultimate, which is because she honestly barely needs it. Though, she does have it, so it's still important to consider it. Really, her ultimate is best saved and used as the answer when other abilities don't have one, usually because you wasted them. This is just much better than trying to force things, to try and maximize value or something. The ult isn't worth forcing because it doesn't offer huge damage output, you don't really need the orbs it can give you, and you're still at risk of getting crushed upon landing when attempting to use it aggressively. Instead, its oh damn I messed up value is insane, as you can cancel your mistake in a situation like if you're getting beat in a 1v1 or if you miss a dash reset. But it also just offers amazing raw movement value that can let you hard chase down an escaping enemy with insane mobility, or be the enemy escaping with insane mobility that you can go res your team at a res beacon. So play aggressively but responsibly. Don't make yourself an easy stun, just let the enemy play themselves into you. And remember above all, that all you need to do is stack up your enemies and dash them without getting murdered right after. So think about what will happen after your dash whether you hit them or miss them, and you'll be set for success on Jewel.